Yes, Lord. Yeko Masato. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Oh, long Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, long Lord. Oh, long Lord. Hey, long Lord. Oh, long. Oh, long Lord. Oh, long.
children of God, our pastor saints, visiting friends, giving God thanks to be back in the service one more time. We just sang about the blood. And if you could just read for us, Brother Stanley, Exodus chapter 12, about the blood. Please stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Afternoon lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 12. Could we please stand for the reading of God's word in Jesus' name? I shall begin. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the soul. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. And he shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two side posts. On the upper door post of the house feast, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Eat it not of it raw nor sodden at all with water but roast with fire. His head and his legs and with the puritancy thereof. And he shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, he shall burn with fire. And thus shall he eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And he shall eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. But I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. Amen. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. He shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. Seven days shall he eat unleavened bread. Even the first day he shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you no manner of work shall be done in there save that which shall every man must eat that only may be done of you and you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for in this self same day have I brought your enemies have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt? 
Therefore, shall you observe this day in your generation by ordinance forever. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, I eat, eat he shall eat unleavened bread until one and twentieth day of the month at eat. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your house. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, in, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. He shall eat nothing leavened. Leavened. In all your habitations shall he eat unleavened in bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take your land according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And he shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when he be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that he shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean he by this service? That he shall say, it is the sacrifice of our Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptian and delivered our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night he and all his servants and all the Egyptians and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said rise up and get you forth from among my people both he the children of Israel and go serve the Lord as he has said also take your flocks and your herds, as he have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the, Egyptian were, and the Egyptian were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneeling trots being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakh about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any dispute. Now the sojourning 
of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even in the same self day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. <coughs> this is that night of, of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is brought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten, thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall he break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And it shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is home born, and unto the stranger that shall journey among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Give God thanks for his words. You need to, when you got a chance, go back and read it again, because it's so much information in that scripture. I need to break it down spiritually to get the full effect of it. The song says, I'll stay under the blood. That one. I'm going to stay, stay right on. under the blood. I'm going to stay right under the blood. I'm going to stay right under the blood. Where the devil can do me no harm.
and the devil can't do you no harm. Why does he hate the blood, brethren? Why he hate the blood? But there's power in the blood. He hates the blood of Jesus. For there's power in the blood. Look at your body as a human being. We have blood, right? If you lose your blood, what happens to you? You get weak. And you lose life. His blood is not like our blood. His blood is like... Um, an uh, antidote for strength. It fights against evil. For he came down from heaven. Uh, the lamb we read in Exodus, right? The lamb we read in Exodus, right? The Passover lamb. He became the lamb from heaven. His blood was shed for our sins. Amen. And that blood is an active today. But in the scripture, it tells us the condition they had to do. Not just, just, not just have blood. You have to apply the blood. Come on, brethren. Don't have it in a, a, on a dog post. Like this. I'll show you what it means. On your head and your hand. Not your feet. You don't trouble on the blood. No. On your hand and your head. The blood must be applied spiritually, yeah? And it says in the scripture that the lamb must be eaten. All the pregnant, meaning the heart, the lungs, the liver, and the kidney. Eat it. You might say, what does that mean? What are you saying to you? Scripture. I'm not preaching, preaching, but I'll give you an illustration, right? Those part of the animal is the major organs. So by eating what God said, you become like him. You hear me now? You become like him. Not only apply the blood, but you have to eat the organs. Eat the word of God till you become like God. Amen. Imagine if you eat chips and take away, you get bad health. Naturally, ain't it? Eat spiritual food, you become strong like Christ. He becomes part of you to form you. And he says also, no stranger. Come on, that's serious. No uncircumcised can eat of it. God has a change, brethren. That's why you repent and you get baptized to remove the curse yes, of your life. Yes, That's why baptism is so important. Because yes, you get baptized, you repent, yes, you get baptized, yes, you become circumcised, right? Clean. Yes, you take part. Yes, you can't walk in here and just take part. It's a curse. God says, no. God has to change you first, touch your heart, clean you up. Yes. And the circumcision is what you have to do. You have to you have to cut away the flesh. The things of the world you love. Cut it away from your, from your desires to become like Christ. When you become like Christ, you will, you will see the power of God in your life. Amen. God hasn't changed, brethren. The Bible says, in the last days of time, yeah, what we're living now, the Bible says, many love for God are going to get cold. Why? Because of iniquity in their life. Because of sin in Christians' life. There's no weakness, in my opinion, there's no um, half Christian. You're either a Christian or not. You're either warm or cold. Hot or cold. There's no lukewarm Christian. So, it says, in the last days we're living in now, many love for Christ will get cold. Because of iniquity abound. Because the world has taken over their desire, their hearts. So you can no longer apply the blood no more because you're in sin. But God said that you will come back one day, brethren, with judgment and fire. Coming back to pay the price for sin. And he said, if you don't have the blood on you, if you're not covered by the blood, was well, the firstborn then, but it's not everybody. The whole world. We need to be covered by the blood, brethren. And pray that God will protect us. Amen. So we ask God today that the blood we're singing about and preaching about will touch so many hearts today. Amen. Amen. The blood can make you clean. Like a transfusion, right, Brother Gilbert? It, it clean out your veins, arteries. I'm talking spiritually, yeah? And it makes you brand new, new strength. You get strength from Christ. 
So today we are going to feed on Christ, brethren. Eat of his word. Drink of his body. His blood, he says. When he says, eat my flesh and drink my blood, what did he say? He said, literally eat. Eat the word of God. Drink it, his word. Something is so bitter, let's eat it with bitter herbs, right? Some of it, what God tells us to do, it's so hard. It hurts. But we have to do it to get the glory, to get the blessing. But God, if today, if God said to you, testify. Just testify. Sing, sing. It could be your last chance. So give God the bless. Today could be your last service, you know. I'm not putting death on nobody. But with a guarantee to come back tonight, with a guarantee. So while we're here now, let's make sure we give God the best. So if by chance death did pass us, we can turn our back and say, Lord, take it away. And you can take it away. So send the God, I'm asking you to give your some testimony service right now. I'll have Sister Kimberly to lead it for us and testify of what we've done for you this week. Get me? Or recently, a testimony of what God has done. So somebody can hear what God has done. Is that right? God bless you. Jesus' name.
up and give the Lord glory today. You know, last week and the week before I was unwell. Um, some years back I had an issue with my face and it started to come back and I remember receiving healing for the face, right, for this side. And all of last week and the week before I was going through hell. I could not speak. When I was talking to my children, my husband, I could barely speak, right? I could hardly eat anything. I could barely get up out of bed. But a sister said to me um, a couple of weeks back when I came and I said, the pain is starting to come back. She said, go on some prayer and fast. And that is exactly what I did. And I'm giving the Lord thanks that I'm able to raise my voice in praise. Because the other day I could not even shout. And I am thanking him. You know what? I could not sit down here and keep my mouth shut. Because trust me, I need to give him the praise.
driving test. I listened to my instructor and he said to me, in everything that you're doing, use your mirror. Use your mirror if you're, if you're gonna stop. Use your mirror if you're gonna turn, use your mirror. And when I'm about to go over into the third day, I put on my indicator. And I'm telling you, I know that there was nothing coming. And I came up and I started to slide over into the left lane. And I'm telling you, I don't know where this Lamborghini is, one of those little cars. I don't know where it's coming from, but my God, when that car comes, I don't know how come my left side is still intact. I don't know how come when the car swerves, 
three of the girls, two of the girls to the park. And while Kaliana was running with Kalia, because it was a bit dark, then she didn't see the pole. And she ran bedroom and she hit her head with the pole. Better when they sent the picture over her eye and when they show it to me, said, God. They had to take her to the hospital. The following day, she had to go back to St. George's because they need a plastic surgeon to stitch it. And when I was at home, I think, God, I said, God, touch that child. Amen. Only to hear that when she went to theater because she's a from cancer, they had to let a machine breathe for her in order to stitch it. The mother never knew until when they came up, the nurse said she might have a sore throat. So she said, why? Because we had to put her on a breathing machine. When I said it, God, I said it.
Evangelist Douglas was testifying, it just triggered testimony in me. Yeah. I remember some time ago in Jamaica, my son was there and he was playing football on the field, and somehow he collided with the goalpost mm -hmm. and burst his fire. Mm -hmm. Now he and his sister lived there. I'm in England, their mom in, in America. So there were just the both of them there, but she was at work. So the friends took him to the medical center in Portmore. And when they see the condition of his forehead, 
they say 25,000 to speech the foreign. If he wasn't there by himself, he didn't have that money with him. Yeah? They wouldn't speech the foreign. They said he may have to go to the public hospital. Yeah? When my daughter hear the news, and she asked and we were going there, she was so worried. And she said she sit on the bus and a lady just come to her and said, why are you looking so worried? What's wrong? And she said she explained it to the lady. And the lady accompanied her to the public hospital. Now, you know in Jamaica, public hospital is a long waiting. Yes. It's a long waiting. With God, you have to have And the people are just dying before they look at me. And she said, when the lady see the condition of my son and sleep across his spirit, she said, no, 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 you can't stay here. Remember, no, she don't know the lady and the lady don't know her. I tell her, God is a good God. Yeah. 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 And the lady took him from public and take him back to the medical center right. and pay that 25,000 yeah. 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 to fit his family. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, he said to call me. It was night over here, so I would send the money. I could not say to send the money. And that lady paid the 25,000 yeah. for him. Yeah. Get him stitched. Yeah. And get him come home, and then I got up to today. Day I call that lady a good Samaritan. Yes. That's how I run my yes. phone, good Samaritan. And we keep on communicating. Yeah? And I just give God thanks that He can provide people in the yes. right day yes. to help you out in certain situations. We pray for me, Jesus.
and I'll just give you God thanks. I'll give God thanks. I'll give you God thanks that I could have been blind in this eye. I could have completely been blind in this eye. But the God I serve is a miracle working God. I could have been deaf in this ear. Two years ago, Bridget sat and dropped right in my ear. Brother, when I see the blood, the blood, the blood, and the pain that I had, I'm not one to be jumping to hospital. But for me, the pain was so severe I couldn't hear. But I'm giving God thanks that he's a miracle working God. Even in my sleep, the devil come and try to say something to me. But the song, as my dad was saying, under the blood. We are covered under the blood. But even in my sleep the other day, I was sleeping. And I'm there and I, I, I'm, I couldn't move. But I was awake. But I was sleeping. And I'm there and I'm like, why can't I move? I better believe in me. I see one big lion on the right side of me. Dressed in a suit. And it comes down to me. And then earlier in the gym, there was a brother that was here. And he was in church and he was kind of... Like his, his face was going back and was like getting like, he was losing life. And in the gym, I went up to him and I grabbed his head uh, and he came back. And then after that, that's when I came back into bed and then the lion was there. And the lion was there and he looked at me and said, and I couldn't move and I was like, and I couldn't say the blood of Jesus. I couldn't say Jesus or anything. But I was there and I was like, I can't move. And brother, believe you me, the man, the lion said, you think I'm going to allow you to get serious about God? He said, you have too much to offer. He said, I'm not going to allow you to get serious. And then he said, he's going to come after one of my friends after he's done with me. But I said, in the name of Jesus, the God I serve is a miracle working God. Wasn't much progress, and they said to me, "We'll have to operate." 
um, with, you know, we sent the pictures off, we sent the picture off to the consultants and let's see what they come back with. And I said, okay, no worries. Um, I sat there and I'm just thinking, God, please don't let them say that they need to be a separation. Please let the consultant say it's okay. I rang my mum and I said, Mum, pray because she might have some surgery. And they came back and they said, although she's young, although the bone might be fine, we still want to make it a bit more straighter, we want to get it back into place. So that she will have to have the operation and please come back the following day. And I said, okay, no worries. And I went home and I was so down and I was so perplexed within my spirit, I couldn't even pray. I had all sorts of thoughts going on in my mind, but I knew that my mum and my family were afraid. Yeah, yeah. And I was fine when I woke up and I prayed and we prayed and we left and went out to the surgeon. And I got into hospital. I just started to feel scared to wait. Then he said, come. 7.30 in the morning. We got there early and she didn't end up having the operation till after one. And she started to get really um, anxious and getting really scared because everyone had come, all the children had gone for their operations and come back up. And she was just sat there, she couldn't eat as well. So anyway, she went down and um, I went down with her. And I remember when they were giving her the um, anesthetic to go to make her go to sleep. And she started to get a bit agitated and the only thing I could say to her within my spirit before I left her, when I realised that she was slowly going off the feet, I could only say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord made his face shine up on me. And I just let her go in that moment and I said, God, let yeah, your will be done. And I came back upstairs and they said to me, oh, before that, if um, we have certain different ways that we're going to try and get the bone back together, if this does this work, we have to put the, bone, um, the pins in, if that doesn't work, that's three options. And I said, okay, whatever. And they took forever, and they, you know, I started to get nervous, and, then I, and I couldn't pray at the time, so I rang my mum again. I said, Mum, pray, yeah. you know, because I know that God is with her. Yeah. And even before she went to sleep, I said to her, When you feel anxious, baby, just remember that God is with you. Just whisper a little prayer and bring your fear. And I remember when they called me, they said, She's back into recovery. She can come back downstairs, and I flew downstairs. And when she opened her eyes, and one of the first things she said was, Mum, I survived. And I said, Baby, you are always going to survive because God has a plan for you. They could say, There's no weapon that comes against you. So, of course, I remember when I was sitting in the waiting, I remember I was listening to this song, and it was a song that kept coming to me. But I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And she came out, and thank God. She had some follow-up appointments, but I'm trusting God that the bones will go back. And I'm just giving God thanks that she's made it through the operation of Jesus. Thank you for the testimonies, brethren. I'll hand back to Minister Miller. Our God is a miracle-working God as we raise a lively chorus in Jesus' name. The blood will carry me, the blood will carry me, the blood.
says you have a pressure an issue now that it can't help you. Doctor has told you recently, I can't help you. Does anybody in here have a condition like that? Anyone? What, we'll just stand where you are. Okay, stand where you are, sister dear. They want to they pray for you. To keep my faith. Just come here. Just come here. 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 Come here.
You want healing? It's by faith and works. By coming here, it's faith and works. Don't have it secretly. If any more come in, come now. We're going to pray for everybody. in your name of Jesus Christ whatever their needs you know Lord and they come to you by faith believing you that you're a healer doctor says they can't help them but you know more than a doctor Lord and we pray today by faith Lord in your word and your power that you will touch them Lord lay them completely on what they're going through bro oh, God your might and your power oh, Lord God You've given us so many testimonies today to remind us what you can do, that you are a miracle working God. And we pray for healing for them right now in your name. We give them give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Give God thanks for today. Is there anyone here for visiting us for the very first time? Can you please stand? So we can recognize your presence today. God bless you. For the first time. God bless you. Praise Lord Jesus. Praise Lord Jesus. Amen. And where, where are you from? Italy and Spain. Amen. Nice having you today. Standing to come and give us the final, um, as the Lord laid in his heart. You know why? Because we read the scripture today, which is a very powerful scripture. Read today, very powerful scripture about the Passover. Very powerful scripture. And we live in a, in a time of Egypt now. Is that right? The world has gone in sin so much that God said that He's going to come back, but He had to be prepared for His return. So, children of Israel were in Egypt, and He said to them, "Look." I'm going to go through Egypt and smite. There was 10 plagues for us. Remember 10 plagues? 10 plagues did not work. But the final plague was the death angel. Every house in Egypt, the angel passed through. But if there was a the blood on the doorpost, the angel would not enter. And the thing about what puzzled me, brethren, it was nighttime, right? Dark. You can't see red in dark. It's dark, night, yeah? Night, midnight. If you put red on a door, and it's wood door, it, it don't show evangelists. If it was daylight, you will see it. But at night, you can't see it. But the blood gives a radiation, Bridget. Quiet, quiet. quiet. <laughs> the blood. You can't see it, brother. But you can feel it. Come on. And where's the blood on the doorpost? The angel just looking for the blood, you know. He don't care who's in the house. He don't care who's in there. As long as he's the blood, he don't pass over. He just pass over to the next house. And every house that had no blood on the doorpost and lintel. He says lintel and doorpost. Not half and half, brethren. Not one side and one side missed. Both sides and the top. top. That's, the, that's like the cross of Christ, right? The cross of Christ. The blood, lintel, top and bottom, like the blood. His head with the pro, pro, with the press of thorns, right? His hands with the bleeding inside. It was the, that sign, the cross in it. And Christ on the cross to come. Yes. So the angel was looking for the cross. Come on, Bridget. Cross got to be in your life. The mark has to be on you. Yes. So it can't, this mark can't rub off. It's a permanent mark. You know when a king gets a seal, right? And the king puts a seal, right? In the Bible, the king seal. Those that have the seal, the Lord knows who are his, right? The king have a ring without. There's something on the ring, yeah? Like a, it's a king head or whatever. When he puts that seal down in something, he makes a dent and a mark in what he press on. To get the mark, it has to be pressed on you. Oh, brethren. The seal has to be pressed on you. So the seal of the king, mark, pressed down, and leave a 
We need to pick it up. What is on the image is on the mark. You can't have a two different image. What's on the seal is what's on you. So when God put his press on you, what left on you is what he has. It's a mark from him. So the blood is a stain. Even if you backslide, you can't hide. Because your conscience is killing you all the time. So even if you sin and go against God, you have to come back. So when you come to Christ and you repent of your sins and you get baptized, you might say, you might say it's on the water. It's not on the water, you know. It's type of blood. And you bury in the blood of Christ through faith, right? And you rise up out of the pool. You are a marked man. Have you noticed this? When you get baptized, suddenly all hell breaks loose in your life? Have you, have, you, have you noticed that? Then you get baptized, all hell breaks loose. Demons come to you that never come before. Tests come that never had before. Even now, it's coming. Come on, Bridget. Because you are marked, Bridget. We are marked. When the blood, and the blood, the two things can make you go to hell. If you walk out the house, that remain in the house. Didn't you say that? That's right. That's right. Don't come out of the house, brothers and sisters. It's conditional. Stay. In, that's why I want you to say something. See? <laughs> Stay in the house. In God's presence. Don't come out of the presence. The protection is your guarantee. It may be uncomfortable, like the, you know the ark. When God made the ark, yeah. No, it's the ark. God made the ark, yeah. He says, "Go into the ark, yeah." There were three floors in the ark. Lower, middle, and upper. Yeah. You really read that Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But the door was on the side. Second level. Sonship. I am the door. The ark had one door at the side of the ark. Oh Lord have mercy. You don't hear me. And you go through that door into the blood. Through his side was pierced. Yeah. I came blood and water. Yeah. Through his side, the door. Yeah. When you go over the door, you get the blood drop on you. The blood touch you. It has to touch you somehow. And when the blood catch you, you see it and whatever. It will make a dent or a permanent change. It's heavenly God's blood, you know. So when you get baptized, don't take it as a joke, you know, joke thing. It's a serious thing you've done with God. You made a vow to God, you know. You made a vow. And don't say, I can baptize you anyhow. No, 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 no. You're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He is the Savior. No Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. They're all the titles of God. I am the way. I am the truth, I am the life, not we are, I am, I was before Abraham, I am now, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, I am the, le well, yes, I am the bread of life, I am the water, I am the I am, so you have to go through him. He came and shed his blood yes. to redeem whoever will. Yes. Without blood shed, no sin can be forgiven. Yes. When Adam and Eve sinned, right? right? In the Garden of Eden. He said God had to kill an animal. Because right. God said the soul that sinned it, shall it shall die. Yes. If you sin any time at all, death is at your doorstep. Whether you're Christian or not Christian, once you sin, death is at your doorstep. Whether you're Christian or not, let me say it again. Whether you're Christian or not, once you commit sin, death is at your doorstep that same moment. And what Satan said to her, no, you shall not surely die. You put the word not in there. God said, you will, you will surely die. He said, you will not. Surely, he put nothing there. Yes. He said, oh, you will be like God. Yes. But God's word don't change, brother. 
Sin is still sin today. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You can't mix up corruption with God law. God don't change. You can't make sin comfortable. Sin is sin. And it's the blood of Christ that is the only remedy for sin. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you come to God, it's your life for his life, you know. With God, there's no condition. You give up your life for him. You give up your life for his life. He paid his price for you on Calvary to give his life. Christ didn't die. It was the flesh that died. Hear me now. God don't die because of the spirit. But the flesh died. You see, look, look, at, look at me, Griffin. How much of me do you see? But what's inside of me? A spirit, there's bread, and there's a soul. You can't see the soul, you can't see my soul. You can't see my spirit. Or you can see the body. But I know my life, why? I'm breathing. The bread inside you can't see. That's what keeps me alive. Christ became flesh. But God came down in the body to bring it makes alive. And the blood he brought down was from heaven. The perfect sacrifice for sin. In the Old Testament, every year, they have to go and commit um, atonement for sin. Every year. They do wrong, go to the priest. And the priest have, have sinned. And the priest who are offering for them. God Abolish all that priesthood. Got rid of it. He now become the high priest himself. Right? So he says, come before him. No, I've been afraid no more. Don't come in In the Old Testament, if you go to before the high priest, you will die, you know. The, sin asked, the priest asks you three questions. Are you guilty or not? If you say you're not, and you are, you're dead. The law was so rigid that there was no, no mercy. No woman that was caught in a, you know, was found to be adulterous. They brought the woman to the priest, right? He said to her, the only woman, this, this, this is the only woman, you know, these men as well. Spiritually, spiritually. Drink this. So he went to the ground, took up the dust from the ground, the holy ground, put it in water, and said, drink it. If she drink it and she was innocent, she'd be okay. If she drink it and she was guilty, her belly would swell. What is entry, brethren? Some of you are swelling up in a bad state for you eat the word of God unworthily. So you start swelling up. Come on, brethren. You're sleeping because you're eating the word unworthily. So what the word should be doing to help you is to have a reaction. Come on. Because you're taking the word unworthily. You can't take this Bible and preach it and sing it and live in sin. It don't work. It don't work, brethren. That there's going to be a curse upon you. You're going to fear God, fear his word, fear his presence. Even your, even your house, your bathroom, is God's presence. Whatever you do in your home, at work, God is watching on you. His eyes are over all of us. God's saying to us, brethren, be under the blood. Don't leave the protection of God. Don't leave it. Then you walk out of God's protection. The dark went into your heart. The enemy have a dark ready you know. How can people in church all their life, you know? All their life in church. For years. 50 years in church. Then backslide. Hold up. Hold up. They left God's presence. Don't take chance with the devil. He's after all of us. He won't stop. He won't give up until he gets his way. But under the blood, we're safe. So those who today who are not, who have not made a step for Christ yet, who have not made a step for Christ, meaning you have not made a step for Christ, we want to pray for you today. And I'm asking for Christians to come up today, not Christians who already know God. Those who don't know God. We want to pray that the blood will be upon you today. The children of Israel, those Egyptians that put the blood on their house door, if they did it, they would have been saved. Looking for the blood, nothing else but the blood. So today, if you're not covered by the blood, you want God's protection.
We live in a time, bread, you know, that you can go to the hospital and not come back. You know that? Just for a little chest pain, and you, can't, you don't come out, can't walk. You can't see. They gave you a drug that has damaged you, that you're never the same again. And you can't sue nobody. But you've got to sign the paperwork, you've got to sign a document to say that anything happened to you, you can't sue them. Before they treat you, you've got to sign that paper. You took your own risk. So if you want to try today, if you don't say you're even a backslider, you need the blood. I said some weeks ago, God said to the children of Israel, to the world, you can live 900 years. Noah would live 900 years. Noah, 900 years, you know. Because of sin, God brought it down to 120. It's in the Bible. Because of sin, God brought it down to 70. It's in the Bible. Read it for yourself. 70 is worth giving to all of us in here. Yeah. What's the word of God? If you're healthy and fit, you may go over. But 70 is what God said in his word. Have you noticed people that retire at 65? By work, they retire 55. Two years later, they're dead. That's a weird. They just retire. And they die. They die. What happened? Because. And look up yourself. So, if you want to try it then, go to hope. If you're not saved, this is what it is. Well, those who are not saved. Frederick, those who are not saved. I need to be touched by God. The altar is open for you today. Don't leave me here without this prayer. It's very dangerous out there nowadays. Very dangerous out there. We want to pray for you. Come forward. Anyone that with prayer, come to the altar. Come, come, come. I will sing a song out there. Come. Amen. Never the same again. No.
for today. We're going to pray right now. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder yes, yes, yes. consider all yes. the works yes. thy hands have made. I see the splash Lord. Yes, yes, yes. See the stars. Yes. Hear the roaring Thunder. Yes! By power! Yes, Lord! Yes! 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 Yes, Lord! Yes! By power! Throat! Yes, Lord! The universe is displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior. Yes, Lord! God to thee! How great the art! Yes! Yes! How great! The Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for today, oh God. We thank you for your strength, oh God. We thank you for your compassion, oh God. We thank you for your mercies, oh God, that are new every morning. We pray that you touch us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you make us a blessing, oh God. We thank you, God, for the words of life, oh God. We pray that you continue to knit our hearts, oh God, that we take heed to your words, oh God. I pray change our lives, oh God. I pray change our hearts. I pray change our thoughts. I pray wash out our mind, oh God. Let us feel the fire burning on the altar of our hearts, oh God. We pray that you strengthen your servant, Pastor Douglas, right, oh God. We pray that you cover your blood. We pray that you shield her. Yes, God. Pray, God, you protect her. God, I pray that you'll be a wall of fire on about her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, God, when the enemy come on her one way, God, they flee seven ways because you're the ancient of days. You're the Lord of Lords and you're the King of Kings. My God, I pray you make us a blessing. I pray that somebody who came in this place today, God, who don't know you, God, they'll go home delivered. God, they'll go home changed. They'll go home, my God, with a change of heart, oh God, to serve you. I pray that you grant complete deliverance because you're the mighty God. You're the everlasting Father. My God Almighty, we need a touch right now, God. God, we have done so much prayers in this place, oh God. So much crying, oh God, to you. So much fasting, oh God, to you. God, we need some showers, God. God, we need a revival, God. We need a fresh touch of anointing in our soul, oh God. That God, you burn up every trace of
of sin. Oh God, you bring the light and glory. Father, I pray that your Shekinah glory will fill this house. Oh God, as it was a Pentecost, oh God, they were gathered together on one accord, oh God. And suddenly, God, they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. I pray, oh God, that you fill this house today. Fill this house from the rustle. Fill to the barbage, oh God. Fill to the pews, oh God. Fill the rustle, oh God, in fire. Touch the musicians, oh God. Touch the choir, oh God. Every member in this church, oh God. I pray you cover. I pray you coat and clear, oh God. Give us the victory, my God. Somebody who need a miracle, God. I pray, God, you grant deliverance today. Somebody who need healing. You are the healer of every sickness, oh God. Touch every heart, oh God. Touch every mind, oh God. Touch every soul, oh God. Go in the revival, oh God. We need a fresh touch from you, oh God. From your holy hill, oh God. No wonder David said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. Said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And you heard us out of your holy hill. God, we are crying, oh God, to you today. God, we are thirsty. God, we are dry. God, we need a touch in the Holy Ghost, oh God. God, we need a revival touch. And the Holy Ghost saturate this house. And be hard and fire for you, God. Take control, oh God. Cover us in your blood, God. Go with us right now, God. Take us safely. Let no demonic force come against us. I bind the plan of Satan. Every force of hell that come against us. I curse it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost and fire. Be our strength, oh God. Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes, Lord. Be our shield, oh God. Be our rock, oh God. Cut and clear. Let your name be exalted. Let the enemies know their flesh. But that you are God alone. That you sit high and you look low. God, you said you, the whole world is like grasshoppers before you. Hear us, oh God. In the day of trouble, God send us help from your sanctuary and send us out of Zion. For in thee is our hope, oh God. In our rock, oh God. Hear us, oh God. Make us a blessing, oh God. Revive us again, oh God. Let the Holy Ghost and fire come down to this house, oh God. Hear us, oh God. We need a touch right, oh God. We need the Holy Ghost, God. God, we need the Holy Ghost. Oh God, hold on before you have mercy on Honey Church. God, hold on. Hold on, oh God. Before you have mercy, oh God. Make us a blessing, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Hold on, oh God. Hold on. Hold on, oh God. Hear us, oh God. And give us the victory. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are trusting our God in you. Father, don't pass us by. Hear us in the day of trouble, oh God. For you are God alone. You are God alone. You never lost a battle. You are the great one. Hear us, oh God. Yes, deliverance. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost revival, Holy Ghost revival, send a revival and touch every heart. Oh, yes, Lord, every mind, oh God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, yes, Lord, glory, 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 yes, glory, yes, Lord, yes. Glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Oh, long, Lord. Oh, long, Lord. Oh, long, Lord. Jesus. Oh, long, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, long, Lord. Oh, long, Lord. Hey, long, Lord. Oh, long. Oh, long, Lord. Oh, long. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Glory. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. 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 Oh, Lord. Lord. the angel and the Bible said when, when Zachariah spoke to the angel said to God said how long will thou have mercy on Jerusalem and he said the angel he said God spoke to him with good and comfortable words God is good God is good just want to remind you glory yes yes then how long and he said, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as thousands of walls. And he says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So God is going to do it. God is going to do it. Whatever we're crying to God for, it's going to be done. All our prayers are not in vain. The Bible said in Revelation that he saw when the angel took the censer. He fill it with it with it and the Bible said they poured it back on the earth. I said that is the prayer of the saints. So God is gonna hear our cry. Deliver us. Just to remind that we have a schedule here. On Tuesday we have service here at 7:30 p.m. Wednesday we have our prayer meeting at 7:30 p.m. Thursday we have our Bible study at 7:30 p.m. We're back on Sunday for Sunday school at 11 o'clock. Our day worship is at midday. And our evening worship is at 6 p.m. Also, just to remind that every Wednesday from 9 a.m. we have a coffee morning here. So please come out and support as it's a tool for mission for the church. For the one souls to get to know God. God bless you. God take you safely. In Jesus' name. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Sorry. Um, also, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, is uh, the prayer meeting for Brother Alan's wife, Mom, who sadly passed away. So tomorrow at uh, 33 Creek Horn Road in NW10. So uh, we'll put the address on the, on the board. So if you'd like to go, please let us know in Jesus' name. God bless you all in Jesus' name.